Well, hey, everybody, Mr. Reeves back with you yet again, and today we're looking at Lesson 17.3 in the Accelerated Math 7 textbook, Graphing Linear Non-Proportional Relationships Using Slope and Y intercepts. So we uh, found out very recently that if you have a linear non-proportional relationship, you can describe it using the equation y equals mx plus b because you are multiplying x by something and then you are adding something or in some cases you could actually subtract something. All right. We also found out that that thing you're multiplying by, that number you're multiplying by, can be represented by the slope, right? So if m were 3, I'd be multiplying x by 3 every time, and it would go up by 3 every time I went over 1. And that b, that y-intercept, if you add a positive number, that will be a positive y-intercept. It moves the whole line up. And if you subtract a number, that will move it down. So b is the y-intercept where the line crosses the y-axis, m is the slope that's a measure of the steepness of the line that's what you're multiplying by so in the past we were given the graph and asked to come up with the equation now it's going to be the reverse we're going to be given the equation and asked to graph it it's kind of ironic actually uh, because traditionally we would graph it and then we would try to come up with the equation. So you kind of did the harder part first, to be honest with you. So real quick, let's talk about what a graph is. A graph is a set of points, and when that graph represents an equation, each one of those points makes that equation true. So we're trying to make a picture, so to speak, of the equation. We're trying to show the solutions to that equation. So if you look at this equation, for example, it says take x, multiply it by 2 thirds, and subtract 1. Well, 0, negative 1 is one solution to that. If you put in 0 for x, you get negative 1 for y. 3, 1 is also a solution to that. If you multiply 2 thirds by 3, you get 2. 2 thirds of 3 is 2, and you subtract 1, and you get 1. So these are two solutions to that equation. But rather than just trying to figure them out, we can use the slope and the y-intercept to come up with them. We start with the y-intercept, and then the slope tells us how to go from there. So I start at the point 0, negative 1, and then I go up 2 and over 3. And every time I go up 2 and over 3, I'll be back on the line. All right. Similarly for this one, except this one has a negative slope, we would start at the y-intercept of 3. And this says if you want to know more solutions, more points that are on this line, go down 5 and write 2. Do you see that? If I go down 5 and write 2, I'll be on this line. And that will give me lots of points. By the way, instead of going down and right, we could also go up and left, right? So instead of going down 5 and right 2, I could go up 5 and left 2, and I will also be on the line. So the slope and the y-intercept, it's kind of a, I don't want to say cheating way, but it's a shortcut of a way to find a bunch of solutions to an equation, and those solutions will give us the graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and start right here with y equals 1 half x plus 1. So again, we have y equals m x plus b that number we're multiplying x by is the slope when we make a graph okay and that number that we're adding at the end is the y intercept remember if it ends up being minus then that will be a negative y intercept so if we take a look at here y equals uh, one half x plus one one is our y intercept there it is right there one is our y-intercept. And there is our slope. And remember, slope is change in y over change in x. So if I want to apply that slope, because it's positive, I'm going to go up 1 and right 2. And I can do it again, up 1 and right 2. Or if I can't go up and right anymore, I could also go down 1 and left 2, down 1 and left 2. What have I just found? I have just found a bunch of points that make that equation true, that make that equation true. So if I draw a line through those points, 
then every point on that line makes that equation true. So this is the graph of this linear non-proportional relationship. Okay, it says take whatever x is, multiply it by half, and add one. So if we just were to check, right, one half of four plus one, what do we get? Well, half of four is two. Two plus one is three. And you see how that point is four three. Four three is a solution to that equation. Notice how did I find it? I found it by making the graph. All right, this one right here, we have y equals negative 3x plus 4. So again, 4 is going to be my y-intercept. Negative 3 is going to be my slope. So we want points that make this equation true. I'm going to start with the y-intercept, which is 4. Okay, now this slope is negative 3. And remember, you could take any whole number and put it over 1 to make it a fraction. So negative 3 is going to be my change in y, and 1 is going to be my change in x. So because it's a negative slope, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and write 1. Down 1, 2, 3, and write 1. I don't have any more room on my grid to get any more points, but that's okay. We only really need 2, although it's always best to do at least 3 All right, to help make sure that you're lining it up correctly. All right, so that is the... Uh, the graph of this equation, right? Every point on this line makes that equation true. Let's check this point right here. This point is 2, negative 2, right? If I go to my equation, go negative 3 times 2 and add 4, I get negative 6 plus 4, which is what? Negative 2. When I put in 2 for x, what did I get for y? I got negative 2. 2. All right. So again, the line shows all of the possible solutions. That's why we have arrows because this goes on forever to that equation. And we are simply using the slope and the y-intercept as a way to graph the line. It gives us some of the points that make the equation true. And by drawing the line, we can find all the other points that make the equation true. Now, what if you are given a situation like this actually let me go over here uh, because this is going to come up where you're given the slope and the y-intercept and you're asked to find some more coordinates but you're not given a graph all right well let's first go ahead and write the equation okay so the equation for this line is going to be remember it's y equals mx plus B, right? So my equation for this one, given a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of negative 1, it's going to be y equals 5x minus 1. All right? Now, it says identify coordinates of 4 points. It does not give you what those points are. Well, I'm going to start where we've been starting on the graph, which is at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 1. And do you remember what x is for the y-intercept? x is zero right because if I put in zero here I get negative one so that is one solution well then I can pick anything else I want for X so let's just pick one shall we so that would be five times one which is five minus one is four right so in fact if I were making a table for this equation I put in 0 and I got negative 1. I put in 1 and I got 4. Again, this is my x. And right here, what am I doing? I'm doing 5x minus 1. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do negative 1. How about we do a negative 1? Because I know how much you love working with negative numbers. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And negative 5 minus 1 would be negative 6. All right. So that's three points. They want four points. Again, I can pick anything I want to. Let's go ahead and just do two. Five times two would be 10, and 10 minus one would be nine. So two nine is another point on that line. Okay, so if this were multiple choice, like it is going to be on the assignment you're doing, if they give you a point, plug in the x value and see if you get a y 
value that they gave you. If you get the y value that they gave you, then it is a point on the line. And if it's not, then it is not correct. So let's do one more right here. The equation for this one would be y equals 1.5x minus 3. All right, so we're going to take our x, we're going to multiply it by 1.5, and then we're going to subtract 3. So again, I'm going to start with 0, because 0 is going to give me the y intercept. So again, if I were making a table, sorry for my crooked lines here, 0 is negative 3. If I decided to do 1, all right, 1 times 1.5 would be 1 and a half minus 3, or 1.5 minus 3. That's going to give me negative 1.5. What about if I do 2? Well, this will be a little nicer because 2 times 1.5 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0, right? What about if I do negative 2? Negative 2 times 1.5 is going to be negative 3, and negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. And guess what would happen? If I were to plot these points, they would make a straight line, and that line would be the line for this equation. If I were to plot these points, they would make a straight line, and that would be the line for that equation. So that's how you can find ordered pairs Given a slope and a y-intercept, change the slope and y-intercept, not change, use the slope and y-intercept to write the equation. And once you have the equation, you can input any value for x you want to find the value of y. Okay? All right, so that's how you make a graph. Now, sometimes we're going to be doing application problems, like this spring application problem. All right, where the y-intercept and the slope actually have a meaning. So it says a spring stretches in relation to the weight hanging on it according to this equation, where x is the weight in pounds and y is the length of the string in inches. So if you take a look at this equation, if I were to ask you what's the slope, the slope would be 0 0.75, right? And the y-intercept would be 0 0.25. So now you'll notice they were very nice. They divided up into fourths for us, right? One fourth is 0 0.25. So there is our y intercept. And our slope is 0 0.75. Now, slope is change in y over change in x, right? We like it as a fraction better than a decimal. I hope you guys know that 0 0.75 is the same as 3 fourths, right? 75 cents is 3 quarters, right? 3 fourths, 3 quarters, 75 cents, 0 0.75. So if you look here, even though the scale is not going by 1, the scale is the same on both. If the scale is the same on both, even if it's not 1, you could treat each of these boxes as if it's 1, right? Because if I go up 1 and over 1, that's the same as if I go up 10 and over 10, or if I go up a half and over a half, they will all simplify, okay? So from this starting point of 0 0.25, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to do it again, up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And do it again, up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. One last time, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to ask myself, does it make sense to connect these points with a solid line? Can you have a fraction? What does X stand for, right? X stands for the weight, right? So this was the weight, and the weight was in what? Pounds? LBS for pounds. And this right here was the length... And this was the length in inches, right? Well, let me ask you have let me ask you a question. Can you have part of a pound? All right, and can you have part of an inch? And the answer is yes, right? So those fractional parts do make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and connect them with a line. So can you see as the weight increases, the length of the spring increases? You guys have all seen springs before, right? The long the the harder you pull down, the more it stretches out. All right. So interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So B, the y-intercept, that's going to be 
the length of the spring, right? With what? With no weight on it, right? That's going to be the length of the spring with no weight on it. And what's the slope going to be? All right. Well, if you look at it, three-fourths, do you remember how we talked about the slope as the unit rate, right? It went from 0 0.25 to what is it? It's at 1.1, 1, 1, right? So when we added one pound, it added, what, three-fourths of an inch, right? So the slope is going to be the unit rate. That is the increase. What's happening? The change in the length, the increase in the length per what? Pound. The increase in the length per pound or the number of inches that it increases per pound. Slope is unit rate. Slope is always going to be the unit rate. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that helps. I'm thinking, are there any more that I need to go over? All right. Again, when you have these application problems, the y-intercept often usually represents where we're starting and the slope represents what we're going up by. So for this case right here, the y-intercept is 2. That's how many cards. If you read the problem, it says they started off with 2 cards. And then the slope is the change each week. We're going up by 4. All right. Uh, so we're going to go. Now, if you look at this scale, this scale is not the same, is it? These are going by 1s, and those are going by 2s. So in one week, what would 2 plus 4 be it would be at 6 right so going up 4 in this case is actually going up two lines so up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 now let me ask you a question should we connect this one with a solid line all right remember this is the number of weeks and this is the number of cards okay can you have part of a week yes but in this case um you're not having part of a week because you're only buying them every week you're buying four cards right you're not buying a half of a card or you're not buying four sevenths of a card each day does that make sense so this one we would not want to connect with a line sometimes i told you this before sometimes we will use a dotted line to show the trend all right, sometimes we do a dotted line to show, okay, I want to see the trend for this line, but I want you to understand that this is not continuous. There are no points in between there, okay? All right, so, and then it talks about more points. Again, we talked about this before. If you have the equation y equals 4x plus 2, for zero weeks, it would be two, right? For one week, four times one is four plus two is six. Do you see how it has the point one six right there, right? And then two, four times two would be eight plus two is 10. And then three, we could just keep adding four every time, right? Three would be 14 and four would be 18. And we could go on forever and ever and ever Right, the change in y in this case is going to be 4 over the change in x, which is going to be 1. All right. Okay, well, that is a quick summary of the lesson 17.3 graphing linear non proportional relationships using slope and y intercept. Have a great day, everybody. Till next time.